stuff call in too, but I don't want to use that feature. Oh, really? I'm kind of worried though. I, I never know if, like who you might have on the other line, you know, that's why. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. What if you have just like, a it's like, it's like playing chat roulette. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If like, it's kind of sketchy. So I might do it with like the channel members. Cause I'm hoping that those guys are, you know, like more. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know how the logistics of it works and I just don't want to risk it. So, uh, let me actually have on the other line. The, that's why. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. Still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry, I had I had weird feedback, okay. but it looks like it's starting. No, you're good. Yeah, I'm gonna tweet about <laughs> it. It sounds good. People are starting to filter in now, which is cool too. And I gotta turn off my volume. JP's hype. Yo, what's up, man? Ali, Jason, Kasim. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So we got people filtering in now. What's up, everybody? Uh, we got the homie SB Mitch, one of my closest friends on YouTube, joining us today. And we're just going to be talking about yeah. stuff, hanging out, catching up. I haven't talked to Mitch in a while. And also it's just... No, we have not. <laughs> yeah, I know, unfortunately. And this is like the only way we catch okay. up is like on this stuff, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I did want to talk about yeah. today was and i told you this was that i wanted to start off with the trophy rooms and your thoughts on it so <laughs> for context for the guys that are jumping in i think this is really funny because i haven't said anything about the trophy room jordan ones like at all i tried to stay like off video topics and stuff out of it i didn't tweet about it i didn't do anything um, but I've been kind of like peeking in the background of what's going on. Meanwhile, Mitch over here is saying that he's been very, very vocal about it. <laughs> Your thoughts, my friend? I have, I have thoughts. They're <laughs> probably not great thoughts, but they're thoughts. All right. Let's hear your thoughts first then. And then I'll give my thoughts on it. Uh, what do you want to thoughts on the shoe itself or the release Which method here? I'll do the shoe itself first release. Um, so I'm sure everyone has seen what it looks like. It's basically a Chicago one with some added aspects to it. The story behind it is pretty cool. I didn't know the actual like story behind it with the whole freeze out thing. Um, so I thought that was a cool little aspect of the shoe. Right. Uh, that unfortunately, due to the release method, no one got to enjoy. It's 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 true to form though because everybody got freezed out. <laughs> basically. <laughs> um uh, aesthetically the shoe itself to me just looks like i mean i made a tweet about it and i hate to sound like a broken re record but it just looks like a jordan one that they dipped in wax yep. it looks like a candle to me uh i understand the story behind it um it's just it's not really anything new or groundbreaking it's just a shoe that I think is reaping the benefits of its limited availability and also just the controversy surrounding the release method for it. Right. And so before we Which get is, and I guess I'll give my take on the shoe. Exactly what you said, like that's the reason why I wanted to get you on is because that exact tweet that you mentioned where it was like dipped in candle wax or whatever. I was like, dude, that's literally nail on the head exactly what it looks like. A <laughs> Chicago just kind of like like, I don't know, some kind of, like, weird, like, whiteness around it. It's just strange. Um, I do like the sole. I think this, is like, clear sole with, like, the stars and stuff underneath is kind of cool. Um, yeah. The blue laces does make it pop a little bit, but those blue laces are controversial as well. Box is kind of cool. But overall, for, what is it now, like, 3,000 and maybe 4,000 now for certain sizes? Your I guess is better than mine, dude. <laughs> keeping up with it. But it's, like, I think it's three or 4,000 now. But I'd rather have the Chicago, in my opinion. You know, so that's my take. Um, and as for the controversial part, so if you guys are uh, over here watching and stuff, I, I'll throw, a, hopefully I can throw a link into the comments, but basically I just read this entire like complex article that went really, really in depth. And usually like complex doesn't have like the best, like, you know, um, uh, articles and whatnot, but this one was very in depth and it talked about, you know, the release things behind the release and they actually got into like the weeds with the controversy of backdooring, which I thought was good. Um, and I, a lot of stuff that I didn't realize like about the story, dude, it's a pretty like interesting story. So, uh, back in December, I guess from what I read, 
they had like he was saying that the early release pairs were apparently stolen from a factory. Did you hear that one too? <laughs> so his rebuttal, Marcus Jordan's rebuttal, was that it was stolen from a factory in December, um, and it wasn't his fault. He wasn't backdooring because uh, he said, "Oh, trophy room didn't even get it in and stuff yet." And I was like, "Okay, whatever." I didn't really care back in December, uh, but then come January ish, like you saw all those like pictures and stuff on Instagram with like. The- shoe boxes and shoe boxes of Jordan one trophy rooms. And even then, like everybody knew it was all backdoored because there's no way the factory can get rid of like that many pairs. Like it just wouldn't happen. Like, yeah. um, so it had to have been him. Um, but even then he was just saying, no, that wasn't me and stuff. These are all like either fakes or whatever. And then he tried to do this thing with the blue laces saying only the ones with the blue laces are legit. Which is <laughs> so stupid. So that's kind of like the whole breakdown. And I, I will put the complex article over here in a bit. But man, I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> really, like he's just trying to play it off when everybody knows, you know? Well, there's a whole other can of worms that are involved with that statement that uh, of, of Marcus Jordan getting away with it. Because, I mean, and this is something I've told a couple of people before, but I haven't really like said publicly as if anyone in public eye really wants to hear or cares. But um, I mean, it's first of all, you have Michael Jordan, who yeah. is a known egomaniac, thinks he's untouchable and does whatever he wants. And it's his son. And I think this might be a situation where it's like the apple doesn't fall from far from the tree. And like it even touched on in the article about having, you know, the whole tie with the Jordan family that, I mean, Nike could be afraid to just say anything. And if that's the case, then this is just going to keep happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been, there's been rumors and speculation about trophy room doing this kind of stuff in the past anyway. And, and, And we'd be, we'd be naive to say that other stores, including my beloved skate shops that I defend tooth and nail, have done it too. Mm-hmm. It's just, I think it's just part of the sneaker world now. Um, and even JC was talking about it in that article, which yes, I actually read an article. Can you believe it? Um, <laughs> it was a good talking one. about just the overhead that is involved with running a sneaker store. And like, this kind of goes a little bit off topic to what we're actually talking about. But I mean, you and I both know Derek from Soul Supremacy has even said on Twitter, like when people ask him, like, hey, what's 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 the best uh, advice you can give to someone opening a store? And his response is always do it online only mm-hmm. because there is so much overhead with an actual physical brick and mortar store that that's where the ethical gray area comes into effect where, yeah, he backdoored all these pairs and got all this money for it, but I mean, on a different release, I can understand this release was just absolutely egregious. But other releases, like, yeah, sometimes stores will be like, yeah, dude, I need an extra $600 to pay my electrical bill this year, especially because, or this month, especially because of what's going on with the unpleasantness in the world right now. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. There's, well, that was a really, really two-sided thing that I went on there. But it's just like, it sucks, but I also kind of understand. Yeah. I mean, I'm never, I would never defend backdooring. Like I I can't do it. I just can't def- do it. But um, for what you're saying about the sneakers, like the skate shops and stuff, especially, we do have one skate shop over here in Hawaii uh, that does get like, APB. <laughs> yeah, APB. I didn't want to say the name because I'm about to get into the weeds with this too. But um, yeah, they're pretty notorious for um backdooring a bunch of pairs too, but they only get like maybe because it's Hawaii, we probably only get like 17. Yeah sneakers or whatever like maybe two per size it's a very small run right so i would say that- yeah and, and i have it on i have a buddy that actually lives out there he's stationed out there and he said that like they were selling uh, i forget which release it was but they were actually selling the release for 300 dollars, not the actual msrp which is kind of like the same thing it's just you're backdooring to people that you don't normally backdoor too right it's actually twofold so that's what i was going to talk about is they probably they backdoor about half the stock which is pretty well known like half of it is like backdoored for like even higher than the 300 but they also do exactly what you said where they sell it for higher than what the msrp is which i think for like uh those quick strike shops and stuff i'm not sure you know like i don't think they're allowed to like sell it for more so i i that is one of the weird things with it but then at the same time like i do understand like 
to survive and whatnot. You kind of have to do what you have to do, but still, I just don't agree with like the ethical like nature of it. It goes both ways, like I said. It's it's tough. Um, but overall, what <laughs> trophy room? <laughs> like you said, I think I think you said in another tweet, he has enough money in that like family trust or whatever that he could pay. Like he he's good, you know. But like, how much more extra money do you need per se? Yeah, yeah. So, I, don't, I don't know. It's it's, <laughs> it's all it's all it all comes down to his last name. Honestly, I mean, I don't. I personally, I'm not a Jordan fanatic or anything by any means. I don't know what kind of relationship he has with his son, mm. but it seems like I don't know. I've never heard Michael Jordan say anything about his son, so I don't know if they're like <laughs> cool or anything. I mean, I noticed that too. I noticed that too. Like you don't ever see him in pictures. Michael never goes to the releases at Trophy Room or anything. The hype, yeah, doesn't. It seems pretty uninvolved. So I'm not sure. We're not going to get into the family aspects, but yeah, just from that side, it's very, very strange. Uh, really quick, sorry to defer. Uh, shout out to Miami for donating. What is this? Two pounds. I love your videos and hello from Germany. Oh, German fam, what's up, man? Uh, yeah. So uh, I love Germany. I haven't been, but yeah, it sounds like a good place. My friend stationed up. Well, yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, dude, the whole that whole thing like actually put like a really weird taste in my mouth, and this is kind of where I wanted this conversation to segue to, and where I want your opinion. Um, I put out like a poll, I guess, yesterday on YouTube, where I asked like, "What's your thoughts?" I guess on the sneaker, like scene or just like the sneaker vibe i guess in 2021 so far because for me i feel like all the sneaker releases have been pretty underwhelming and i just don't feel excited like for anything right now like there hasn't been anything like that wow i really want this shoe mm -hmm. the trophy rooms were mainly i guess for like because it looks like a chicago and the resale value but it's not something that i like desperately want you know and i can't think of any releases in january or february i was like dude i really really want this one you know how do you feel yeah I mean, the only shoe that I've seen so far that I was like, I need, need, need this release are the free 99 dunks that are coming out. And uh, I'm just a huge fan. I'm trying to pull up a picture. Free yeah, I'm going to be old school and pull it up on my phone. Mm -hmm. Free 99 dunks. Those are nice. Uh, these. Yeah, yeah, the colorful ones, yeah. Those are nice. I think those are cool as heck. That's like the only release this year. I'm like, booyah, I really want to get those. But like, I mean, especially with SBs, just because that's like my wheelhouse, I guess. It's kind of the same thing. I mean, I wasn't really a huge fan of the wheat dunks. Uh, I made a lot of people disappointed. I wasn't really huge into the Street Hawker dunks. I think they're cool. They're just not my thing. It's not, um, I don't, I, even these, even these, um, Region exclusive, well, I guess region exclusive for various reasons. Uh, the camcorder Nike SB dunk that's supposedly coming out. That like I, I'm, I mean, it's a cool concept. It's just not a colorway I'm really into. I, if I, if I, I like the concept. I would have color blocked them a little bit differently, but that's just me. Really, dude, I really yeah. like those. The camcorder ones are sick because the story of like you know skating and stuff. That's really what it was. Was a camcorder. Yeah like stairs and all of that stuff i think that's really cool and the colorway actually looks pretty reminiscent to the travis scott playstation <laughs> pull up a side by side you'll see it man so i never thought of that holy <laughs> cow you're totally right that's hilarious <laughs> yeah. that is absolutely hysterical it's... i mean i i like the colorway i like the colorway i like the colors they used on it i just wish that they would have i mean if you looked at the shoe and just inverted the two colors the gray and the black. Yeah, I'd be like, all right, perfect. That's cool. Yeah, I'm just a sucker for a lighter colored vamp on a darker colored mud guard. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It, it, I think that's probably like one of the ones that I'm like kind of getting behind. But other than that, like I don't feel super excited. Like there's been some okay releases. I'm not saying that everything is like complete trash or whatever, but it just doesn't. I'm not excited. Like there's no sense of like, oh, I actually want to wake up, you know, in the morning and try for it. Like I just feel like okay. I set my alarm and then sometimes I like sleep through it and I'm like, I don't feel bad, you know, when I wake up and I'm like, oh, I didn't, yeah. chance. you know, it's like, well, especially for you because you have to wake up at like what, 3.30 in the morning or something stupid like that? <laughs> or five, yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been like super excited. Like even the upcoming stuff that I see like in the coming months that they kind of tease like the university blue ones, uh, those like powder blue ones or whatever, those are okay, but I'm not super excited about those either. 
I mean, it's a, it's a UNC colorway. All UNC colorways are always just like, I mean, you're taking the fact that people love the UNC colorway because of the story behind it, and then putting out a one, which is basically like, I mean, ones are basically casual wear fashion sneakers at this point. Yeah. So you're just putting those two things together, and of course people are just going to go crazy for them. But that's the thing, though. It, it doesn't seem like there's a craziness to like anything this year. It's not, I mean, even just like from looking at, like I guess, social media and stuff, it doesn't seem like people are like very like enthusiastic about sneakers right now. It's kind of like a, just a gray area. And honestly, like, it just doesn't feel like this much. And I'm not sure if it's because Travis Scott hasn't dropped anything. And, you know, there's not, like, a lot of buildup for these releases recently. But, and also the start of the year, I know, is usually pretty slow. Because, you know, they drop everything crazy in December. Then January is always. Yeah. But even, like, February and March, like, the previews and stuff, I'm just like, I don't know. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that... And this might just be my my ex, not experience, but my point of view. But it seems like, and, be, and may, po possibly just because I'm super active on Twitter and no other social media, and as we all know, Twitter is a cesspool of negativity and anger. Um, it, to me, it seems like overall the vibe of not even just old heads, but like even newer sneaker enthusiasts, the confidence and the morale is extremely low because people know that they can't get any shoe for retail anymore. And I don't know if that's a, um, like an aspect or a result of, you know, the pandemic and like everyone and their mother all of a sudden getting into sneakers. Cause they're like, Oh, you can flip shoes for money. That sounds cool. So you have all these new sellers mm -hmm. and all these new people that are just like absolutely decimating the resale market, which is making, you know, some of the New York City loopers a little bit angry, but there's the same amount of stuff or even more limited stuff releasing and just a way bigger group of people going after it. And I think that's got a lot of people discouraged. And it's even got some people I know just to like kind of walk away from it all, which I mean, if you're taking it, I mean, in my opinion, if you're taking it that seriously to walk away from it, then you're taking it a little too seriously. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, that's just my. Uh, that might just be my experience. Like, I still think that shoes are going to be harder to get until people can get back to work in service industry jobs and jobs that are severely affected by the COVID nineteen pandemic. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good sentiment for sure. Like, I definitely feel that vibe too, where some people are just like hands up in the air, you know, like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not going to even try anymore. And I feel like just yeah. Uh, it's even it's just it, untouchable for certain things like sneakers is just everybody knows sneakers is bad um adidas hasn't been dropping like crazy releases or anything like even remotely like want people that like that you want you know new balance for some reason yeah. kind of growing on me and i talked about it actually yeah they're on the rise right it's a big time big I, time new balance quality is some of the best quality that you can get i didn't in know the past couple of years I didn't realize, yeah. Though, yeah, I didn't either. Like, I'd get a New Balance in a beater box and be like, eh, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then my friend Reed would be like, dude, New Balances are actually really crazy if you sit there and look at them and, like, analyze how they're put together and the materials they use. And, wow, he's he's right. Holy cow. I just I just literally uh, filmed a box, and I guess this is a preview for this Friday, but I got one of those uh, M. L. Leon Dior's doors. Or oh, jeez. Doors. Yeah, those things are sick. Have you seen them in hand? Mm -hmm. dude i didn't realize I, I haven't seen personally in hand but like everyone i know is like dude these things are on point like there's people because like i be like I, i've made it pretty clear that i'm in like a cook group shout out familia mm -hmm. but like everyone in there that buys those shoes they're like yeah i'm gonna flip them but they're like they get them in they're like dude i don't know if i can do that because these are so nice right <laughs> yeah so i think maybe that's the move for me where i'm just like okay i'm gonna look for things that are like more like far away i guess from like the norm and get away from the jordan ones and stuff for a little bit and then hopefully like it'll reignite my passion for like things that are i guess more hype like sbs and uh one but even that yeah. it is pretty like over well the dunk market not the sb market the dunk market super oversaturated so that's kind of like yeah. on the already too although those uh for some reason i don't know why those uni university blue ones tomorrow is that tomorrow the women's ones the cobalt blue ones yeah those for some reason look not bad i don't know why it's just i really want them oh really okay i got early access i got early access on the unlv dunks those are getting delivered tomorrow oh nice um 
But I was kind of hoping that I got the Cobalts. I might actually end up doing a trade because I'm just a sucker for blue. I don't know why. Yeah, same. I don't know why either, but that was the only one that caught my eye. And I'm like, okay, that one's not bad. <laughs> no, I agree. Oh, no, eh, whatever. No, eh, whatever. Hey, by the yeah. way, uh, hey, by the way, uh, reserve. Reserve. Did I hit any from today? Nope. Oh, I didn't hit anything either. I don't know why. I mean, I tried. I mean, it's sneakers. Like, at this point, like, if I get anything on sneakers, I'm like, happy accident. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, you just got it. I mean, you just got it. Well, I just got, hold on, what did I get? So, from sneakers lately, I have those UNLVs. Those are coming in tomorrow. Um, I have to go pick up my Clot 14s. Oh. I hit those. Oh. Uh, I didn't even know. I, I'd have to look and see what I've gotten since before then. But I think the last thing since before then was like the, the Volt Air Max 95s. Mm. And then before that was Off-White 5s, I think, the sale ones. Okay. That was, that's a good hit. That was, that's a good hit. Yeah. I mean, it's my, old, it's my OG sneakers account um, that I've had since like 2015, maybe, something like that. So it's got some, it's got some mileage on it. So, and that's like, that's a whole other thing. Here, I, I want to ask you because I talk to so many people that are just so just unlevel headed and not keeled at all. Do you actually think that there is? I, <laughs> I'm going to use this term very loosely. Scientific evidence that either starting over with a new sneakers account helps your chances on getting anything. Not scientifically. Um, I not scientifically. Uh, 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 where I do think where I have seen like a lot of people resetting accounts and I reset it myself too, like twice and I've gotten good success for like three or four releases. Usually like you'll see a, like you'll hit, hit, hit and yeah. then stop again. That's when you reset again. But it does seem like uh, sneakers does favor new, new people getting in, you know, cause I think it's a psychology thing when you think about it, it's not scientific, but psychology speaking if you have somebody new coming in you want them to stay like engaged right you want them to stick around or whatever so you'll give them like a couple hand me outs or whatever like oh here look you can it's easy you know and then uh after that you kind of get nothing and that's just how it goes so it, it gets new people drawn in the old people still try because they already know no matter what like they're gonna people are gonna try but they want to get the new guys like yeah. coming in still so yeah i don't know it kind of makes sense but i'm not sure if it's like legit or not but I do shrug yeah. that there are shadow band accounts, and I think one of my old ones was. So, I don't know. I mean, then, then I mean, then I think every other account I've ever used is shadow band. <laughs> I literally, I think I have, I have my main account, which I've had for a while. I had one account, and this is actually a funny story because it's stupid, but we'll just leave it at this. One account was the same account that I used for StockX when I used StockX. Big okay. shock, that account got hacked. Oh. So someone actually used my sneakers account on a sneakers pass for Off-White Fives, the black ones, during All-Star Weekend. Whoa. So, like, I got a notification on on, on my, uh, yeah, on, on one of my phones, and it says, like, remember to pick up your Off-White Five black. And I'm like, huh? And I look, and, like, it showed that someone named, like, I don't even remember their name, but it was, like, obviously a girl's name. Uh -huh. reserved like a size five and a half off weight five. And I was like, that's not me. And then they, then, then they used it and they paid for it with their own money and stuff. So I was like, okay, that's weird. But I deleted the account, but then I made a new account after that happened. And the reason that I, I personally don't think new accounts really do anything is because I have hit literally nothing on that account. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I've heard a lot of theories and stuff too, where it's like, oh, you need to buy like a couple, like, whatever shoes and then they'll give you like the good release yeah. I, nobody really knows though it's just that i know like um i've spoke to devs who work on the sneakers app and stuff and there's a lot of things that are controllable from the <laughs> from really? the, the back yeah so <laughs> that, that kind of freaks me knowing that like in my head i'm like okay they, they're not hooking people up but they can definitely like turn people down you know so uh i, I just kind of gave up on it as a whole yeah i saw um, this is a really funny thing and you might attest to this. Uh, this is a comment that I saw a while back and I wanted to touch on it before we went down that, uh, tangent. This guy, old gen gaming, he said, 
Bryson needs that new balance uh, because he's going to be a dad soon. <laughs> so he needs those dad shoe vibes. <laughs> is, is that what it is? <laughs> I don't think new balances are dad shoes at all. They're just super comfortable and really like, I, I think just the way that fashion has evolved over the past couple of years, they're just like, they're what people go after now. I, I think they're dad shoes. Dude, especially, hold up, let me. I mean, certain models are for sure, but like, if I saw if I saw someone wearing a pair of like the Bodega No Bad Days or something like that, I wouldn't be like, ha ha, no. those are two kids in your minivan. Yeah, no, 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 those aren't. But these are these five fifties, bro. This is a dad. This is a. It kind of looks like a bowling <laughs> shoe. This is a bowling shoe. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, that's that that model exactly. <laughs> I mean, those are cool and everything, but they're definitely dadish. Yeah, and this, I mean, if you look at like. A, like, you look at like a 990 or 997S or anything like that, like mm -hmm. those are just like kind of futuristic looking. I guess, that, yeah. I, I mean, they can be dad shoes, but they can be cool dad shoes. I, I gotta, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just all of a sudden something switched in my brain where I'm like, okay, I just need comfort over style at this point, you know? <laughs> you need those Disney. Spirit on, spirit on, spirit on, spirit on, spirit on, spirit on. <laughs> You're gonna see the entire collection just slip into like chunkiness. <laughs> It's pretty. It's pretty exciting, though, man. I actually uh, I bought my first pair of kid shoes because uh, we find out the gender in like a couple weeks, like three, three, four weeks. So I um, ended up with a pair of blue shoes, blue like top infant shoes, and then a pair of pink infant shoes, and that's how we're gonna do like the reveal. So yeah, we'll find out. Ooh. Yeah, and I think it'll be cool to do it like you know as an unboxing. So. Uh, we're going to have uh, Mari's parents and stuff wrap up whatever color it is, and then we're going to find out at the same time based off of <laughs> what it is. Nice. <laughs> Personally, I'm hoping for a girl. Are her parents, are her parents on uh, the Big Island too? Oahu, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Is that no? Is Oahu the Big Island or no? No, no, no. Different. Oh, Big Island. Okay. okay no. it's, it's your parents on a different island, correct? They were on Kauai, but my dad actually just recently moved to Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gotta go visit soon. <laughs> yeah, nice. but I mean, yeah, that's where you originally grew up, right? Yeah, Kauai was my yeah. That's where I was uh, raised and whatnot. Well, Vegas is where I was nice. in high school on Kauai. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a definitely uh, interesting experience. Kid shoe stuff. I talked. To, I got a chance to talk to um Scott uh, because he's dealt with all of that right with his two kids, boy and girl. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, don't even try to do the kid shoe collecting because they grow out of it in like two months. It's it's the dumbest thing. <laughs> Makes sense. I've heard that from numerous people. Yeah. So it's like you want to style your kid. They're going to wear it like literally two times in that span of one or two months. And honestly, at the at the when you think about it too, most kids, they don't wear sneakers anyway. You know, like they just don't have shoes on <laughs> at all because they're not walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You guys, the little kid doesn't wake up and like go to their tiny drop boxes and go, hmm. Which one do I want today? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So I don't know. I, I just think it's going to be funny. But um, dude, these are actually very expensive. Too. Very expensive. The two that I bought, mm -hmm. the, they're in, one was an infant size six and one was an infant size eight or something but one was like 90 bucks the other one was 110 bucks i was like what the heck for kid shoes kid shoes like what <laughs> do you have any diapers that is <laughs> like literally the amount of leather on that little infant shoe is like the same amount of leather on the toe box of a regular one uh, adult size one yeah doesn't make any sense and the quality is way worse and i'm like so expensive but you gotta do what you gotta do i guess mm-hmm oh. mm-hmm mm How's everything going with you, though, man? How's I'm excited that? for you guys. But not. Oh, and you cut out really bad. What'd you say? Oh, I saw. I said, uh, "How's pancake and stuff doing?" And how's uh, everyone? Pancake's else? good. She's actually she's starting physical therapy next week. Oh no! She's for had some kind of like weird, like yeah, she's had some kind of weird like back leg issue, it's probably since like the start of quarantine. Like she's been putting less and less weight on it. We don't know why. Hip dysplasia. Um, so we. We it could be dysplasia, it could be like a torn or like like it damaged ACL, it could be you know, something else. The the main concern we had was like we took her to the vet and they wanted to make sure because I guess there's especially with small dogs there's a high chance of I don't remember if it was like cancer or something like that where there's 
an instance where something inside their body will make their back legs stop working or stop having feeling. Um, but we cleared all that. So she's on steroids right now and uh, just hopping along a little bit. It's like weird because you know how like dogs, like they walk on the, on the front of their paws or whatever, like this. She's kind of walking on her whole paw plus her like elbow like this because she can't put any weight on her right side. So, but it's just weird. It's, it's, it's like she's limping. She doesn't seem to be in pain because she still wants to play and she just does doofy stuff all the time. Yeah. But it's still just kind of like, I mean, she's going to be eight in five days. Oh, <laughs> yes, we know our dog's birthday. Kuma's turning um, two days. She's going she's gonna to be eight. What's up? Kuma's turning eight in two days. What? That's cool. The same age. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, Pancake is like, he, Pancake is a celebrity. Somebody wrote it in the comments over here. Yeah, I, she's, she's, better, she's better than me, that's for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> she's just awesome when she's on the videos. I love that tongue, man. It gets me. Oh, that's that's Ryan. Ryan costs out. Everyone check out Cluckin' for Kicks on Instagram. He's a good dude. I know him. He lives up in Milwaukee. See, I Which, what you like him. Oh, Man, is you you're very very in tune with your audience and like you know exactly who's commenting and stuff at a personal yeah. standpoint. I think that's dope. Yeah. Plus, it's it's good because like I just hit fourteen thousand subscribers and it's like definitely a slow burn and I'm totally okay with that because if I had how many subs are you even up to by now? I think it's two hundred seventy thousand or something. Going down. How, I would be. I wouldn't be able. It's like it's. It'd be like having too many children. I wouldn't know their names and be like, "Who are you? Who are you? Who are you?" <laughs> it's kind of sad because I do know a lot of the old people. Like I'll see the names and I'm like, yeah, I'll see the names. And I'm like, but to get the new guys, but, so much, the new guys so I, I like. I can't comment. I, it. Like it kind of makes me sad. So yeah. I'm coming from because it's like really like you want to have like a good like base and whatever and that's where you are and that's why i, I kind of miss that a lot actually <laughs> yeah yeah so we'll see someone um, wants to see sneakers now you want to uh, do you want to do some show off uh i mean i don't have anything new per se what do you what do you have that's new <laughs> well i have all my inventory that's boring though um <laughs> i should have got something new. Let's see. I'm gonna grab these. Yeah, okay. let's see it. So I just picked these. I just picked these up from Gusto. Um, you know uh, Ryan Purvis, Gusto the Ninja, right? Yeah, he's out in Japan. Yeah, yeah. I just picked these up from him. These are send help highs. Oh yeah, send helps. There we go. But you don't like highs. Yeah. I don't really like highs, but this is like one of my favorite colorways of all time. I just love this blue reef colorway. It's so good. And like, <laughs> uh, come on, uh, it's gonna work. I'll yeah like <laughs> butter 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 <laughs> literally actual butter yeah that's nice these are just dumb like i actually i ended up having to de yellow the midsole and stuff so they're in good shape and he had a really these i think i got these for like 320 i was just like all right that's a really good price so is it 320 seems yeah. that for that condition i guess so makes sense yeah i mean they're going for like there's dead stock pairs going for like 700 to, I think I even saw like a $1,200 sale, which is just stupid. Yeah. Crazy. What the heck? Yeah. That's crazy. Huh? Well, I didn't, I didn't copped anything new, man. Unfortunately, like I got those, rocks, I guess that was inside that soul supremacy box. But other than that, I don't have any. Yeah. And that's why I guess like partially why I'm kind of getting like disappointed with sneak. Because I scroll through GOAT looking for, like, new things that I want to purchase for the personal. And I don't have anything yeah. to purchase, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I... Yep, no, I completely agree. Yeah, like, I, I still want, like, the what the dunks eventually down the line. Like, that's on my list. Uh, there's a couple others here and there. But for the most part, like, I like the... Like, yeah, whatever. I don't um, I was kind of really wanting those... Um, shoot. Which was the Christmas release dunk? That you didn't like? The Turduncans? Clivers. Clivers. Oh, yeah. The Clivers. Eh. Exactly. So originally and back in December, I was like, these look pretty cool. I want them. And then when it came into January, I was like, you know, I don't really need these anymore. <laughs> so I just yeah. 
my watch list. I'm like, ah, whatever. And since then, I just haven't seen anything that I want. Only the only thing that I'm targeting is that uh, the camcorder one, the dunk, and that's it. Yeah. Those are cool. And then anytime that George one, uh, the yellow one comes out, I want that too. Pink box, goodness, you gotta yeah do that. Pink box. Let me see. Uh, I do have a personal pink box. Then I have a pink box stashed. Pink box, pink box. Where'd you go, fella? I love Here's my favorite pink boxes. Good old Oompa Loompas. Oh, yeah, I know you love those. <laughs> those ones are... Yeah. So I got these from Soul These are from Soul Supremacy. I got for 160 bucks before the Dunk Height hit. Whoa, the Dunk Height hit. <laughs> I, 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 wore, I wore these. I wore these for all of Complex Con Chicago. Like that's where I don't know if it's gonna pick it up, but there's some I see it. scratches right there. That but yeah, I mean that's what you're supposed to do. Wear your shoes. Yeah, that orange. Kind of. Browns colors. Yeah, a little bit. Hold <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's close. Exactly. Maybe that's why you like them. Orange box of goodness. There you go. The originals are way better. Goes. Yeah. I like them. I got these from Liu Kang's closet, baby. Oh, those are dead stock? Yes, sir. Oh, shoot. how much is that going for now? Uh, probably like a probably like a grand. I think I bought them for like four fifty, maybe. <laughs> right before it took off. Huh? Yeah, basically. That's I mean, I did that with my I. Like my stussies, I sold my stussies because I just never wear them, and they were just starting to separate. And I'm like, it's either keep them and pay someone to do a reglue, or just let someone else enjoy them. So I sold them. They sold for twelve hundred dollars. Don't ask me how, but they did. There's some people that will spend some money for that stuff. Surprisingly, you have to be patient. Yeah. Like that's that's the main thing. Like I'm realizing with the high end shoes, just be patient and they'll sell. I agree. Yeah. The out of stock shirt. Oh, oh, I said yeah. Oh, I said, did you did you hey, out of stock kicks? Has he reached out to you yet? I don't know. I don't look at my emails. He's a good dude. I can vouch for him if he hits you up. He's a good dude. Um, I gotta do this. Sorry, Bryson. OG. Big unpack with the nine. That's a good. Oh, I don't. What size are those? Eleven point fives or elevens? Twelves. Twelves. Oh shoot. These are. I, I want them, but I can't pay for them. <laughs> well, these are just like stupid expensive. Now, I mean, I, I, I mean, I've told this story five billion times. I'm sure you're aware of too. But like, I traded these. I traded a pair of. Air Yeezy ones and like five hundred bucks for these. What Air Yeezy ones and five hundred? Yeah, I thought you won those. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what I did. Is I won those Yeezys from Tong, and then I gave him five hundred dollars extra, and he sent me what the dunks. Ooh, he lost on that. It was a gentleman's agreement. He lost on that one. <laughs> I love that guy though. He's so cool. Oh, he's dude. He's dope. He's um. And I saw you did like some live stuff with him too. Have yeah. you met him in person yet or no? Not not in person, but we've talked on like yeah these streams and uh, I had a call and stuff with he's, him. He's such a good dude. Like when I went up to Toronto for uh, my buddy Christian's event, he was there too uh, with his now wife. But he had like he had the Londons there. He had uh, Paris is there. He had like even the Michael Lows that are like they're one of like four hundred or something like that. And he had all those. And I'm just like. And he was just such a such a cool dude. Like I was just like very humble. I was super stoked to like meet my friends from Toronto, and then he was there too. It's it such a good day. I remember I remember seeing those pictures. I forgot that you met him in person. That's cool. But yeah, he's a yeah. and he's uh his business and stuff is just like super super legit. Uh, he runs everything very um like authentically, you know, and uh, transparent. Mm -hmm. I appreciate, and that's the same reason why supremacy. Like they're very very transparent. Yeah. And like they're always like straight is so important because we're talking about the backdooring and stuff at the beginning. It's like 
you know, they keep it, they keep it a hundred, which is important. Whereas these other companies yep. are, and like, Oh no, that they, we got stolen from the factory or whatever, you know, like, okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who do they I fell I, off a truck. <laughs> yeah. They fell off the truck. <laughs> That's the one they fell off the truck, dude. Uh, so I gotta, like, ask, like there's speakers there in the mafia or something like, get out of here. I got to ask, when are you going to start doing the skits and stuff again? As soon as I have ideas, honestly, <laughs> I just, it's so hard to come up with new ideas for skits and stuff. I mean, there's, there's a lot of like easy ways to make fun of people like the whole your boy SB Mitch things and all those other, but it's just, it's just, I've, I've utilized, I've used too many, too many hype beasts to make fun of terms and stuff for videos now. So I don't want to, I don't want to create the same thing or use the same thing twice. Right, right. I I really miss those though. Those are my favorite. I love that. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the video. I can't I don't have that kind yeah. of music. do you still um do that stuff by the way? I forgot. You did um Improv? Yeah. How's that? I mean it's no one's doing it now, so there's like every once in a while there'll be like a live improv thing that I find out two days after it happens. Uh, so I can never do it, but like, you know, I try to like maintain my chops. That's why I'm like I try to maintain them in, in um, video. the videos more than anything, but with this whole pandemic and everything, like I've really kind of tried to learn like, what's it called? Like keyframes for Final Cut Pro, which you use, do you use Final Cut or do you use Final Cut or Adobe? Final Cut, but keyframing is hard. I've been learning, I've been trying to learn how to do like, like I just learned green screen stuff last week and I'm like, well, I'm going to be doing this all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that would be really cool for you. You just got to set it up behind you. And yeah, then, like, that's it. Just learning like how to like every, every week I try to like learn a new, not method, but like process in final cut. And it's actually like, it's really fun for me. Cause like the editing process is probably my favorite part of doing the videos quite honestly. And you're, you're editing, you can actually see that it's getting, like, stronger and stuff, too. I, I know on your subscribe thing, did you make that yourself? Like, where that freaking little rat thing is, like, flying across the screen? I don't know what that is, dude. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the sponge monkey? No, that's a thing from Quiznos in, like, the mid-90s. <laughs> I just, like, everything that I put in the videos, I literally just go to Google Image Search and just, like, it's called a sponge monkey. So I would just, like, type in sponge monkey, PNG, transparent, and there would be, like, three or four images. So, I mean... I have to actually do all that framing stuff. You did that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it takes so long. Respect. Respect. It's, uh, it, it's, it, it was like, you can see it. Like, I, like, I'm not saying anyone should waste their time doing this, but like, I, if I look at like the whole aspect where I'm like doing the whole house, housekeeping spiel at the beginning of the video, yeah. like just how the thing moves and everything, like you can see it get better and better every week. I like I'm getting I'm trying to get to the point where it's just like it's like kind of second nature and I don't really have to like do a lot of control or command Z when I'm doing that kind of stuff. So it's getting there, but it's still that's amazing. It's it, trips me up every once in a while. Yeah, that's why I really appreciate like frugal aesthetic because his editing is just ridiculous. The amount of time I know that like, bro, respect. Nobody realizes like those keyframes, it takes a good amount of time. Like even when you're really solid at it, it still takes time. It's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Back to you, my friend. And the most, the most annoying thing about that whole process too is, and this happens to me every week where I'll like figure something out and I'm like, yes, that's really cool. But I'll do it on accident and I won't remember how to do it ever again. <laughs> yeah. It's gotta be, you gotta use it the time or you're going to forget. It's, like I'm going to start filming myself editing. So I remember how to do stuff. That, okay. Don't do that. That sounds nuts. <laughs> no, that's a waste of time. No, and no one should do that. Okay, so let's uh before we like end this thing because my phone's about to die. I only have like an hour max on this. Yeah. What video games and stuff are you playing right now? I always got to check in with you. Well, right. Well, I only have an Xbox Series X. I didn't. I don't. I still have my PS4, but I didn't go for PS5. Uh, what am I playing right now? You know, honestly, I'm playing a lot of Xbox Game Pass games. I just played through um, the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition from like 2013. Wow. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Right now I'm playing um, a side scroll adventure game called Unravel, which is where you're like this little 
guy made of yarn and you have to go through all these like it's kind of like limbo if you're familiar with that game so you have to like do all these puzzles and stuff but the catch with the whole unravel aspect to it is you're this little yarn guy and your yarn eventually it's it's always trailing behind you mm -hmm. and it eventually runs out so you have to figure out how to get around certain areas of certain levels to where you have enough slack in your actual body yarn to get to the next point where you can re-up your yarn it's a really interesting game it's just a really like beautiful uh kind of moody like not depressive game but like it's very like it's got a very charming charming aura to it it's very cool that's awesome okay yeah i haven't been playing like you? other stuff like on playstation same thing i kind of like moved away from like the shooters and all of that stuff but for some yeah. And I like started turning on my switch after a really long time and I got into breath of the wild for the first time ever. And have okay. you, you're not a Nintendo guy, right? I mean, I have a switch. Um, I pretended to actually like animal crossing when it first came out. And then I realized <laughs> there's no objectives <laughs> and like, it's to the point where like, I like Seth came to my Island and like a couple other people came to my Island and someone from uh, Familia was like, wow, dude, this island looks like it was put together by a serial murderer <laughs> because I'm just not like, I'm not like a details oriented kind of guy. So like, it's like, there's my town hall and then right to the next to it is like a Ferris wheel. And then there's a pool next to it. And then like five garbage cans in between them. And people are like, this makes no sense, dude. What are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm having fun. Animal Crossing. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't a big Animal Crossing guy either. I got over it in a week. But Breath of the Wild is really good. It's like the Legend of Zelda series, right? So yeah. I was binging that for a while, and I just finished it recently. Um, but the other one that I'm playing or just finished beating, actually, was Hades, which I'm not sure if you've heard of Hades. Oh. You played it? Have you played I've it? heard a lot. You know what? I've been going through an old podcast. Um, it's, uh, one of the, uh, the McElroy brothers who do like my brother, my brother and me and like adventure zone, they have a, um, podcast with some of the people from Polygon. I don't know. Polygon's got a YouTube channel and they're like, it's like a gaming, like content creator, but, um, they do a podcast called the besties and them and both Polygon, like far and away said that Hades was the best game of 2020. And it's really hyping me up to try it out because it just sounds so cool because like they're saying there's incentive to dying in the game, yeah. which yeah. is so cool. It's an interesting concept. Exactly. Like your unravel. I like those things where it's like unorthodox, you know, where it's not like just a typical, yeah. okay. Uh, point A to point B, you know, there's something different along the way. And I, I really appreciate like that kind of like concept thinking and Hades was really, really fun at the same time. So yeah, that was, that was yeah. good. It, it only like takes you maybe a couple days though to finish it, but still it's, it has some good like uh replayability even after you like beat everything. That's what, yeah. That's what everyone I've talked to that has something good to say about Hades is just, you can play it for 60 hours, even though the actual game is only like three hours long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. It's crazy. It, um, uh, someone mentioned in the chat, uh, Job and Matt, no, it's Matt Barata. Um, they said try Ori and the Will of Wisps. That's actually on my list. I've heard of that one. Like, too. I really, really want to try Ori and the Will of the Wisps because I've heard really, really good things about that game too. It's the same kind of concept as what we're talking about, like Limbo on yeah. these. It's one of those games where it's I've heard it's just a it's a different thing, a different style, and I I want to play those kinds of stuff too. But yeah. nothing really that I'm looking forward to in terms of gaming too. Actually, like at twelve o'clock, they're having a Nintendo Direct, which is why I want to <laughs> make sure I have time for that too. <laughs> So that'll be fun. Yeah. Literally uh, the only game I'm looking forward to is Far Cry 6. Oh yeah, Far Cry. Okay, right on. Um This okay. is my favorite. This is my favorite series. That's the only reason why. Really? Okay. I actually um I'll send you an email after this. There that Far Cry 6 is actually trying to get um uh YouTubers to promote their game. So if you actually play it Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. I'll I'll send you the email literally right after this, man. But yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming on. Uh, thanks for talking sneakers and stuff with me. And it was just good yeah, catching you, brother. Thanks for having me on. And congratulations again. Thank you, my friend. Uh, yeah, I will link all of SB Mitch's uh, links and stuff in the description after this video is done. So check him out over there if you guys aren't already. I know most of you guys are. But still, great content, original content, and probably one of the most realist sneaker YouTubers on the platform. And remember, that's 10 minutes of your life that you're never going to get back. <laughs> <laughs> on the real. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you later, man. I'll see you guys later. Later, bud. Thank you again.